So here we are out in the woods looking for leaks. And uh, I get a lot of questions sometimes about how to find a leak, what's a leak look like. There's a lot of different leaks, right? Um, there can be sap leaking out of your pipe, that's a major leak. There'd be vacuum leaking out of your pipe, that's also a major leak. Um, but what we're trying to find today is the micro leaks, the smaller leaks that you may not necessarily be losing sap from, but you could be losing production because you don't have the highest vacuum you could have. Uh, so in time, that does affect the spout or the, the, the tap hole, I should say, as far as drying out and maybe healing up so you wouldn't get the maximum production out of that. And of course, we're, we could be losing vacuum if you have hundreds of micro leaks. So in walking down this main line, you can see the main line here with all the, all the different lines coming in, all the 5 16ths coming in. These are green 5 16ths, which I will note, the green is very difficult to see in. Um, I have a tough time seeing the sap in the green, just, just a side note on that. Now, as it fades or whatever, I have noticed it's been a little tougher, but there is some different shades of green out there. This is the H2O Rigid. It's a great tubing. Like I said, just a little bit difficult to see sometimes. But anyways, so we come to the loop and hopefully you can see this with the camera. We're gonna flood this down a little bit. And we're gonna just wait for a little bit of sap. So can you see, hopefully you can see that, how that's racing. Oh yeah. See how fast that's racing? So we know there's some sort of vacuum fail on here, okay? Because the vacuum is trying to get past the liquid that's in that loop, right? So we're gonna walk up this line and my cameraman's gonna follow me here. The first thing I do is I usually put my hand right on here and as I'm walking, I kind of, you know, I'm feeling with my hand, I'm trying to picture that hand finding something on here. Squirrel bite, deer chew, whatever. Oh, there was something right there I just bumped over. And there is a little bit of damage from something right there. You can't even see that, but that, that's not a leak. So we're gonna walk up here, hand dragging. And so we're about midway through the season right now. Um, so as far as like, you know, big squirrel bites and missed taps and things like that, we, we've kind of got those. So we're at the first spout here. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flood this out. I'm gonna, we got good sap run today, so that helps. We're gonna flood this, this drop out. So I can see the way that that's fibrillating towards the main, towards the 5 16th line that there's not a leak on this drop, okay? So then what I do is I come around the other side of the tree here, right? Now, I, I do know that that drop's not already leaking, but where is the leak? Well, just to make sure, you know, I go like this and I pull that up and I flood that out. Okay, so we're racing again, we're still racing. So we know that the leak is up the hill. So we're gonna keep going up the hill. Again, my hands on the line, consciously letting my fingers follow and try to feel for something. There was another something right there. Uh, nope, just a piece of mold or, or uh, something stuck to it. My guess, I can probably guess where the leak is here, but we're gonna see if we can figure it out. I'm gonna turn my back here. All right, so same thing. We're gonna come up here and we're gonna flood this out. And hopefully we got enough sap where that works. Now I do see, I noticed right here, you look on the video, or on, you can see this big crack in the tree and the spout is over here. So this could be the leak or a leak just because of that. Sometimes a tree that has some damage like that. And Lou, look at that. Look at that. So you can see that fast pace, fast pace, fast pace. So to be sure that it's not something in the tube, before I go messing with this spout, I'm gonna get this loop up as high as I can and try to flood that out and try to eliminate the possibility of any type of leakage on there or any type of squirrel bite or anything. And I don't see that. So it is probably in this spout or in this hole, I should say, in this tree. And like I said, looking at this tree, there's a little damage here. Um, there is an old tap hole over here that, I don't know, probably four or five years old. So really, this, this hole is a pretty good spot. I'm not really sure why it's leaking. So let's, 
Let's yank it out and see what we got here. So I'm gonna keep that plugged. You really don't wanna let atmospheric air enter into the vacuum system while you're messing with leaks. Now I'm just trying to look in the hole to see what I see. Sometimes you can see a crack or something in there. Um, I'm guessing that we're leaking because of this damage. So I am going to just put this on the T for a second. Now, everybody does things different, okay? And I'm not saying this way is the right way, wrong way, or whatever. Um, I, I rent these trees, okay? And I don't always retap them. It depends on the tree, okay? This tree, not real healthy anyways. It's got some damage to it. Um, if I'm, the reason I'm looking up right now, I'm looking up at the top. It's not in real great shape. Uh, you know, I'm probably just going to go ahead and retap it here. And what I'm going to do, careful there, cameraman. What I'm going to do, a lot of times when I have a situation like this, I will retap down lower. Okay, so I'm going to do a J drop. All right, so I'm going to find a, a better spot to tap. I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna tap it also a little bit shallow. I'm only gonna go like an inch. Just gonna take that, put that away, so I don't stab myself with it here. We're fooling around. So I'm gonna do a J drop. All right. A lot of you may be familiar with the term J drop, as it as it shows. You know, it goes below the lateral and then comes back in. So why I do that is so that when I'm pulling taps or in the woods dealing with leaks or whatever. If I see that, I know that there was probably an issue with something, maybe in the original tapping in January, February, um, it was tough to find wood or it had been some sort of service because of a leak. And that indicates, hey, you know, when I'm walking, hey, that one's lower, why is it lower? Is that a potential problem if there's a leak on that line? That, that's all that really indicates. So when we pull taps, I might even cut this drop out if I say, you know what? That tree is really not that good. Let's just rip that out of there. So, so uh, let's double check here. Now we got that vacuum restabilized, and as you can see right there, no more fibrillation. Now I have one more tool that I want to show you real quick here before we end this video. Um, this is a vacuum pinch tool. This one's made by Loac. Actually, I think it's discontinued now, but Pruno makes one. A couple other companies make one. You put this on here and you can cinch this tubing down and, and stop the vacuum so that you wanna do a service like this. It doesn't mess up the rest of your system. Now, however, I did find that on a rigid style tubing, it's not a good idea to pinch it because it doesn't really snap back because you're pinching it down so, so flat um, that I just, I don't recommend that. So, but it does work really well. I, I, I could have used it on the drop. I could have used it just like this on the drop it drops the soft tubing and that pinches the vacuum off so that it doesn't make the rest of the system fibrillate. I do use it, I do carry it, it's one more piece to carry but it, it does work and as you can see like even there you know it, it does leave a little pinch mark so you gotta you know you gotta be careful with it sometimes but if you had a large breakdown a large leak you know a tree fell or whatever and there's leak 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 you can pinch it off and, and take your time fixing it but uh, all right so that's a quick overview on how to find a leak.